I've never seen a man so controlling. For example, his newlywed wife has to ask his permission for everything she wears. He laid down a few laws for her right after she got married. If Asli wants to see her family, she has to be accompanied by him. She couldn't see her friends for too long and had to cut off all contact with her previous boyfriend. He even read out all the messages her boyfriend sent her. Aslı beni delirtmek mi istiyorsun? Aç şu telefonu cevap ver bana. Amacın ne? Neredesin? Al. Telefon senin. Düğünü diye. Bundan sonra bunu kullanacaksın. Ne telefonda, ne mesajda, ne de yüz yüze. Anladın mı? He makes every decision without considering Aslı's feelings. Who can stand such a domineering man? Then the newlyweds went out for a dinner party. Suddenly Farhat sees his brother-in-law, some secretly spying on them. In the previous episode, he threatened his wife to put on a show in front of him, to prove that they got married out of love. But Sim doesn't give up, because his instincts as a cop tell him that there is a secret behind this. Of course, Farhat's uncle doesn't want them to be together. Yijit is secretly a gang leader, but in the public eye he masquerades as a philanthropist, and is running for mayor into months. That's why he threatened Asli not to make trouble, and asked her to accept the fact that she's married to Farhat. Otherwise, he'll show her how cruel it can be when people on the same side of the fence go against him. Asli too was very tough and made it clear that she will never be a part of their game. Yijit gave her a fierce look when he heard her declaration. It was her words that sowed the seeds of hatred. Farhat's extended family looks harmonious on the surface, but behind the scenes, there is a lot of rivalry amongst the members. As soon as the family stepped out of the hotel, a large number of reporters gathered around them. After all, the presence of many police at the wedding venue and the sudden marriage of the two, who were so different from each other, aroused public curiosity. Asli had to play along with them in order to put the matter to rest. But this made Farhat's uncle very angry, because if Farhat had killed Asli earlier, they wouldn't have got into so much trouble, not to mention the fact that he was running for mayor at this very moment. If the journalists find out the truth, he will not be able to run for mayor, but he could go to jail. Asli had to pretend to love him and tell the reporters that I met Farhat a few years ago in Beirut. Unfortunately, I was separated from him for a while after that due to some circumstances. Luckily, I was finally reunited with him. The day after this story came out, Asli's previous boyfriend, Jack, came to see her. Farhat's henchman saw this and called Farhat to inform him about the incident. Jack questioned her why she was secretly married to another man. Asli feels aggrieved, but she can't tell him the truth and weeps silently. A few minutes later, Farhat arrived. Farhat pulled his wife away roughly and didn't listen to her explanation. Her boyfriend tries to stop him from such rough behavior, but Farhat easily pushes him to the ground. These two men are fighting over a woman, but Jack was no match for a professional killer. Even though he was the one who got beaten up, Farhat's mind was clouded by jealousy. <laughs> While being pinned down by him, Asli quietly pulls out the knife. She's been hiding under the pillow and goes to stab Farhat directly in the abdomen. Asli did it because she was driven mad by this man. The pain of being stabbed is nothing to Farhat, but being stabbed by the woman he loves may be enough to kill him. Soon after, the police and the doctor arrived at the building where the accident happened. When questioned by the police, Jack glanced at Farhat's henchman. Seeing him show the gun on his belt, he has to say that he doesn't remember what just happened. Meanwhile, Asli and Farhat came out of the apartment together, but Jack doesn't dare to stop them. He looks like he's realized that he can't afford to mess with this man. Asli looked at him helplessly and got into the car. Farhat's jealousy flared up again as he watched the couple not wanting to part with each other. Asli shouted back at him angrily, how do you want me to forget him? Even if you get him out of my sight, you can't get him out of my mind. If you hadn't come along, I could have started a happy family. Farhat couldn't bear to hear such words from his wife, so he slammed on the brakes and stopped the car. Asli was taken aback by his frantic behavior. What a horrible thing to say. Who could accept a man with such a dominating personality? Then the two of them went back to his extended family. When he was questioned by his family, Farhat made up an excuse that he and his wife were moving back into the house. In reality, he was worried that Jack would go to her again while he was away. At night as they came back to her room and found only a bed in it. So she asked them why they threw away the sofa. Farhat's mom played dumb and laughed saying why do you need two beds? I haven't bought a baby bed yet. As Hale, on the other hand, bluntly stated that my marriage with your son is fake and if you want me to have a baby, then you can forget about it. Farhat's mom on the other hand replied angrily, that since you are married, then you have to try and love Farhat. If you don't behave, 
then, we will make things difficult for you in this house. Asli had no choice but to call the maid and ask her to add a bed to the room. The maid said she couldn't do anything about it because she didn't dare to change anything on her own. Luckily, Farhat's cousin brought her a sofa soon after. When Farhat came back, she noticed that he was bleeding from the wound in his abdomen that she had stabbed him with. Asli rushed to get a medicine kit to change his wound. Meanwhile, Farhat was looking at Asli with deep affection. He had never seen this woman being so gentle with him. Asli looked at the back of Farhat as he walked forward with great difficulty and felt guilty. But she sat her day alone on the sofa until late at night. When she came to the bedside and took a peek at Farhat to make sure he was asleep, she secretly took out the cell phone she had hidden under the pillow. But Farhat sudden snoring scared her into putting the phone away. In fact, Farhat was not asleep at all but pretending to be asleep. Maybe he did it because he was too scared that Asli would run away and leave him again.